Okay, we're looking at a Maytag. This design is actually a Whirlpool design that Maytag bought. And so when you remove this top console, basically you can see there's like a D uh, mechanism here you need to push from the front. So you can take a flat um, uh, paint scraper would be ideal and push in on the sides right here and then pull up as you push in and you'll see that that will come loose uh, will be able to be pushed out of this hole here when you put it back together make sure that your lid switch is securely in place as well and that no wires are chafed here and again once again your water level sensor line is not pinched and then when you put this back together you just simply push the back uh, legs down into the hole and then push down on the top and that secures the top back in place and so what I found is I've temporarily bypassed the lid switch so I can look at it and I've removed the motor so I can isolate the motor and the transmission and so basically what I found is that if I take the motor out the motor would periodically do certain things and it periodically wouldn't and so the motor initially had a smell to it like it was burning so I need immediately unplugged it and so what I found is that the settings on the timer did not particularly jive with what it was supposed to be doing and in particularly um, when you pull this out uh, well yeah basically what happened was this the act whatever the pointer on this timer was actually not doing what it was supposed to be doing so that indicates to me that this timer uh, is shot or it needs to be rebuilt so I'm going to try and rebuild it okay Take so uh, the timer knob has to be removed first thing grab a hold of this little tang right here with a needle nose not too hard and then just pull on this outward knob and you can see how that uh, there's a this thing here basically holds the knob in place there's kind of a mushroom end on that and then you can pull the knob off then once you pull the knob off there's a tang over here you can sort of pull loose and then the whole timer will come off and this is a clamshell design you can see what we'll have to do depress the little tangs here on the sides of the clamshell as well as slice this to get inside the timer take it apart as we take it apart notice where the parts go at this point we don't really have to do much except remove these points out of here um, make sure and leave the knob where it is so that when it when you compress it back down it compresses down freely so basically we'll take the timer uh, points out here and clean them up and just be very careful and some timers you can um, dislodge this part here and then pull it apart easily this one here I'm just going to leave together and then pull the the points out separately. Okay, so the, here are the points and we can see that these points here are stuck together basically. Um, yeah, so they're they're fused together. This this point here right there that that one third second from the left far left is fused together and is pointing downward so 
and any of these points particularly these these ones here with the dark edges I need to clean up with a a emery cloth or fine sandpaper and put it back together and we may be just good to go <clears throat> okay so we have the timer back on and we push that center piece in so it holds the knob tight in place so and once again I have a temporary bypass here and the motor removed so I can watch and isolate the transmission from the motor you don't typically have to do that but I just did it just for this situation also you might want to check check the water pump action you can take the water pump clip and put it inside here and check the water pump action if the water pump is stiff when you try and put this in, in here and turn it then uh, you need a new water pump or there's something stuck inside the water pump now to to check the uh, wash cycle without putting any water in it you can pull this uh, hose here loose this is the water level sensor tube uh, that goes up to the console and you can pull that off and then blow into it slightly and then you'll notice that your motor will come on for the agitation cycle remember like so if you test this line down here to replace this back down tight a lot of these will have clamps on them clamps are a good idea because if this is not connected and or if there's a pinch up here um, the machine may overflow so once again make sure the lines are in inserted into the tank there's no rodent uh, little uh, bite marks on it and that it's connected here as well and it's not pinched down here and you should be good to go and here we have a couple little finishing touches we have the my special oiler I sell if you're interested you can contact me and I will sell you a bottle of oil and so we always lube a couple of the springs make sure that the springs are lubed well there's springs that mount the unit and we just want to make sure that these springs are lubed you see that Maytag has uh, particularly lubed their their back balancing spring and added some features to it this balancing spring back here extra lubed but unfortunately some of the springs up in front were not lubed very well and so something got they got distracted apparently from doing the other things that we're supposed to do and then also when you're putting your cowl or front portion back on you can take a little WD-40 and spray it around any of these rust spots which will help inhibit, inhibit the rust and or you can take spray paint clean that up and then spray it but any of these rust spots here, particularly down here on the bottom, uh, they tend to rust, so you want to uh, hit them with some sort of anti-corrosion uh, stuff and or spray paint. So we're good to go on this one. There's your disclaimer. This video is for informational purposes only. If you need a professional, contact your local Whirlpool Maytag dealer directly and so yeah we're good to go on this one
Your donations help support reuse and recycling worldwide. Please send them to Bill's Recycling Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. Z underscore fixitman at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching. If you need any help, I can coach you over the phone for a fee, 707-443-8347. That's Pacific Time, 9 to 9. Thanks again.